Welcome to this segment of the chemistry of beer. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the ADH, the, the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction, but now we're going to be talking about it in the context of what it is, a redox reaction. Now this is a topic that you're undoubtedly familiar with from your study of general chemistry. We're going to have a brief review of oxidation or redox reactions. Then we're going to discuss the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction in the context of a redox reaction. Finally, we'll discuss the mechanism of the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. And then we'll tie up some loose ends and summarize what we've discussed. Redox reactions are something that are discussed in general chemistry. And so I thought I would take a minute to give a brief review of redox reactions. If we look at this diagram, we can see that the overall process whereby some molecule A that's in an oxidized state reacts with some other molecule B that's in a reduced state, and we end up with A being in a reduced state and the B molecule being in an oxidized state. That's the overall process. We can write this overall process as the sum of two half reactions where A is in its oxidized state, and we add some number of electrons to get it in the reduced state. And then B is in the reduced state, we take away some number of electrons, and it ends up being in its oxidized state. To continue our discussion of redox reactions, and, and in particular our review of redox reactions, we want to think about the energetics of this process. To consider the energetics of redox reactions, we're going to first of all consider standard reduction potentials, which are abbreviated or symbolized as E0 prime, and the units are volts. So if we go back to our, our example reaction, we see that we have A in its oxidized state, and we add some number of electrons and get A in its reduced state, and that has a standard reduction potential value of plus 0.13 volts. Now the analogous process whereby B starts out in its oxidized state and we add N electrons to B to get it in its reduced state, we see that that has a standard reduction potential value of minus 0.14 volts. We want A to end up being reduced and B to end up being oxidized. So we have to reverse the B reaction, and when we reverse the B reaction, we have to change the sign. So our two half reactions are A in its oxidized state plus N electrons gives us A in its reduced state, and that's still plus 0.13 volts. But because we reverse the second reaction, we're starting with B in its reduced state, and it ends up being in its oxidized state, plus it has given up N electrons. And since we reversed the reaction, we had to reverse the sign. And so now that has a standard redox potential value of plus 0.14 volts. The net reaction is simply the sum of the two half reactions. A in its oxidized state plus B in its reduced state going to A in its reduced state plus B in its oxidized state. And we sum up our two standard potential values, plus 0.13 and plus 0.14 and we get plus 0.27 for the delta E, the change in the standard reduction potential value for the overall process. So now we're ready to move on and consider the thermodynamics of this redox reaction. The equation that we're going to use is a modified form of the Nernst equation. This equation is delta G naught prime, that's the change in Gibbs free energy, the naught indicates standard state, and the prime indicates biochemical standard state. That means, among other things, that the pH is assumed to be neutral, or pH 7. So delta G naught prime, the change in Gibbs free energy under biochemical standard state conditions, is equal to negative N F delta E naught prime. The F stands for Faraday's constant. The n in this example is the number of electrons, so we're going to let n equal 2. And if we plug in the value for n and the value for Faraday's constant, 
which is 96.48 kilojoules per volt per mole, times delta E naught prime, which we calculated previously as plus 0.27 volts, the answer we get is negative 53 kilojoules per mole. And the important take home lesson is that a positive delta E naught prime yields a negative delta G naught prime, which indicates that the process is thermodynamically favorable. We can consider the redox reaction that we've been discussing in terms of something that might also be familiar to you, that of the galvanic cell. If we look at this diagram, we see that we have two chambers separated by a porous disc. The porous disc will allow for the movement of ions. In the chamber on the left, we have the cathode, that is where reduction occurs, and in the chamber on the right, we have the anode. That is where oxidation occurs. So B, in the right-hand chamber, starts out in its reduced state and it becomes oxidized. A, in the left chamber, starts out in its oxidized state, but it then gets reduced and ends up in its reduced state. We now want to move on and think about this galvanic cell in terms of the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. I noted earlier that the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction is simply a redox reaction. And so we can think about it in terms of a galvanic cell, similar to what we did with our example reaction. If we look at the diagram, it's slightly more complicated, but it's essentially consistent with what we talked about for our generalized reaction. In the right-hand chamber, we have the anode. That's where oxidation occurs and we see that ethanol is being oxidized to acid aldehyde and in the process liberates two electrons and two protons. Now our porous disk can allow the movement of those protons from the right hand chamber to the left hand chamber. The left hand chamber we start out with NAD plus in its oxidized state and when we add two electrons and a proton, we end up with NADH, the reduced form of this cofactor. So the question we now want to ask is, would the galvanic cell that we just considered work as illustrated? Similar to what we did in our example reaction, we're going to consider the two half reactions. So we could look up these values in a standard reduction potential table, and we see that acid aldehyde plus two protons, plus two electrons, becomes reduced to ethanol. And that has a standard reduction potential value, a biochemical standard reduction potential value of negative 0.17 volts. NAD plus, which is the oxidized form of the cofactor, if we add one proton and two electrons, we form the reduced form of the cofactor, NADH. That has a standard reduction potential value of negative 0.315 volts. We're asking the question, can ethanol be oxidized by NAD plus? So we have to reverse the first reaction, and because we reverse the first reaction, we have to change the sign. So for our, our top half reaction that we've reversed, we have ethanol going to acetaldehyde, plus two protons and two electrons. And since we changed the sign, that is now plus 0.197 volts. Our second half reaction we can keep as written, and so we have NAD plus, plus a proton, plus two electrons, goes to NADH. And we keep the same sign since we did not reverse that reaction, and so that's minus 0.315 volts. Our net reaction, which is the reaction where we're wanting to study is ethanol plus NAD plus goes to acid aldehyde plus NADH plus a proton and our delta E naught prime is minus 0.118 volts. Now this negative sign might seem a bit odd and so we need to explore this further. Once again we can now consider the thermodynamics of the reaction. If we go back to our modified form of the Nernst equation and we plug in the values, N is two electrons, Faraday's constant is 96.48 
kilojoules per volt per mole. And our delta E naught prime, which we calculated previously, is now negative. It's minus 0.118 volts. So that our answer overall, delta G naught prime, is seen to be equal to plus 22.8 kilojoules per mole. So what's going on? We have a positive delta G naught prime, and that means that the process is not favorable thermodynamically. So we are in a conundrum, and we need to find our way out of this conundrum. To do so, we are going to revisit some concepts that you learned in general chemistry. Recall that for the following general reaction, A plus B goes to C plus D, we have the relationship delta G is equal to delta G naught prime plus RT, R being the gas constant, T being the absolute temperature, times the natural log of Q, where Q is the reaction quotient. It's the concentrations of the products, so the concentration of product C raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, lowercase c, times the concentration of product D raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, little d, divided by the concentrations of the reactants, which are A raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, little a, times the concentration of reactant B raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, little b. Now we want to apply this concept to the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. So we're trying to work our way out of this conundrum, and we reviewed some concepts from general chemistry. Now we want to apply those concepts to the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. As a reminder, the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction converts ethanol into acid aldehyde, concurrent with the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. If we take the reactants and the products and we form our reaction quotient Q, we see that we have delta G is equal to delta G naught prime plus RT times the natural log of the acid aldehyde concentration, one of our products, the NADH concentration, also one of our products, divided by the ethanol concentration, one of our reactants, times the NAD plus concentration, our other reactant. Now one product that we did not include is the hydrogen ion concentration. And the reason why is because we are under biochemical standard state conditions, delta G naught prime, and that has already been accounted for. Recall that acid aldehyde is toxic. Acid aldehyde is one of our products. It's consumed rapidly by the aldehyde dehydrogenase reaction. So that effectively lowers the concentration of one of our products. Also, keep in mind that cells generally maintain a ratio of NAD plus to NADH that is much greater than one. And then finally, after consuming an alcoholic beverage, the ethanol increases inside liver cells. So we have an increase in one of our reactants, ethanol. We maintain our NAD plus to NADH ratio greater than one. So we have a relatively higher concentration of NAD plus versus NADH. And one of our products, acid aldehyde, which is toxic, is metabolized further by the aldehyde dehydrogenase reaction. All these factors work together to keep the right-hand side of this equation negative. And so overall, that can carry the day and make delta G negative. And our cells function under delta G terms, not under delta G naught prime terms. Remember the, the, the naught part of delta G naught implies one molar concentrations of reactants and products with the exception of hydrogen ion concentration. And our cells do not function under one molar standard state conditions. Instead, our cells function under the conditions that are actually prevailing, and that determines what the sign of delta G is and whether or not a process is thermodynamically favorable or not. So now we're ready to move on 
and discuss in particular the mechanism of the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction. Shown in this figure is a structure of the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. I want to point out a couple features of this structure before we move on. The first thing I want to point out is that this structure was determined here at the University of Oklahoma with the help of several undergraduate students. This was a part of an independent research project that they were involved in. We have four what we call subunits. So four polypeptides make up the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. It is shown in a stylized representation, which we call a ribbon representation. Now, a ribbon representation shows primarily the main polypeptide chain and does not show the amino acid side chains. This representation helps us avoid too much detail and allows us to focus on essential aspects of the structure. So you see we have some broad flat arrows and we have some corkscrew looking things. The broad flat arrows are referred to as beta strands. The corkscrew looking structures are referred to as alpha helices. For our purposes, we can focus in on one of these subunits and in particular focus in on the active site. That's where the action occurs. So we're trying to understand how alcohol dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidation of ethanol into acetaldehyde with the concurrent reduction of NAD plus to NADH. We showed you the structure of alcohol dehydrogenase, which is sometimes referred to as a tetramer because it's made up of four different subunits. And we've decided to zero in on one of those subunits, and in particular, to zero in on the active site. Here is the active site of alcohol dehydrogenase. We see a gray sphere, and that is a zinc ion. So this enzyme binds to actually two zinc ions per subunit, and one of the zincs helps it catalyze its reaction. Now you see that there are uh, residues, amino acid residues, that are shown in stick form coordinating the zinc ion. And then there's a red sphere also coordinating the zinc ion. That red sphere is meant to represent a water molecule. Normally, this is where the ethanol molecule would bind. Above the red sphere, we have our nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, our, our NAD plus moiety, and we also have some other amino acid residues highlighted. I've indicated some distances between some of these residues and, and moieties, and please note that all these distances are about 2.7 to 2.8 angstroms. Now an angstrom might be an unfamiliar unit for you. It happens to be 10 to the minus 10th meters. So one angstrom is 10 to the minus 10th meters. So now we're going to answer the question, how does alcohol dehydrogenase catalyze its reaction? What is the mechanism of this enzyme? So once again, in the bottom of this figure, we have the structure of alcohol dehydrogenase, and above it we have a schematic diagram. We're set up for something that's called a proton relay, whereby a general basic catalytic residue can abstract a hydrogen as a proton from the hydroxyl that's attached to carbon-2 of ribose. This sets up a relay whereby the oxygen that's part of the hydroxyl attached to carbon-2 of the ribose now abstracts a hydrogen as a proton from the hydroxyl group that's attached to carbon-3 of ribose. This continues until we abstract the proton from alcohol. While this happens, we transfer a hydride. A hydride is simply a hydrogen atom with an extra electron. It's very what we call nucleophilic. So the hydride is transferred to the nicotinamide ring of our cofactor NAD+. When this happens, we end up with our product acetaldehyde with its oxygen still coordinated to the zinc, 
and the reduced form of the cofactor, NADH. So now we're ready to tie up our discussion, tie up some loose ends, and summarize what we've learned about alcohol dehydrogenase as a redox enzyme. The ADH reaction, as noted, is a redox reaction, and we can use our understanding of redox reactions and of thermodynamics to analyze this reaction. We saw that a reaction that does not appear to be spontaneous under biochemical standard state conditions can in fact be spontaneous under conditions that prevail in the cell. Both the alcohol dehydrogenase and the aldehyde dehydrogenase reactions form NADH. Please keep this in mind because we will be revisiting this cofactor several times. Finally, the increase in NADH can perturb the cell's preferred redox state. Recall that NAD plus to NADH, that ratio is usually maintained much greater than one. And yet both the aldehyde dehydrogenase and the alcohol dehydrogenase reactions form NADH, and that can cause problems for the cell.